Welcome to Chemistry 101. First thing, physical reactions. No new substances ever formed. These are things like state changes. We go from solid to liquid to gas and back again. Chemical reactions. Always a new substance is formed in a chemical reaction. Indicating this, there are several different things you might observe. A colour change, a gas being given off, a precipitate, a solid, in effect, being formed, and energy changes, where the thing gets cold as heat is taken in from the surroundings. This is called endothermic. And where heat is given out, it gets hot into the surroundings. This is called exothermic. We can alter the rate of a reaction in four basic methods. All of them involve what's called collision theory. If we decrease the particle size, we're actually increasing the surface area. This means that there is more surface for the reaction to take place on, i.e. crisps will fry faster than potatoes. If we increase the concentration, there are more particles there for the reaction to take place with. This, as in concentrated bleach, will kill germs faster than dilute bleach. Concentrated orange juice tastes more orangey than dilute orange juice. If we increase the temperature, then the particles that are present have more energy. This means they are more likely to collide with the correct amount of energy required for the reaction to take place. That's why things are put in freezers to cool to stop them going off, or things are heated up to increase the speed of reaction. The final method is to use a catalyst. Catalyst is a chemical that's not used up during the experiment, but will increase the rate of that experiment. It allows a different method for the experiment to take place. Examples of this are things like catalytic converters in car engines to turn noxious gases from the engine into less harmful things, or enzymes used in biological washing powders to speed up the be the reaction. Catalysts come in two types. Heterogeneous, which means the catalyst is in a different state to the reactant, and homogeneous, which means the catalysts are in the same state as the reactants. In the exam, you will be asked to draw a graph. Graphs are always, as you can see here, either going up for the release of the volume of gas being given off, against time, or the mass loss, which would be the reverse of that with the graph coming down. As you can see on here, always put on the labels and the scales. They are worth marks. A normal graph would be, as you can see with the dark blue, if you increase the rate of reaction, you get a faster, steeper graph, as in the red. If you decrease the rate of reaction, you get a slower, narrower, lower graph, as you can see in the green. If the volume of materials, reactants being used is halved, then you get half the volume of gas being given off. The dots are where the graph for that particular colour finishes i.e. when the graph flattens out. The reaction rate is worked out by the change in the volume of gas being given off, that's what delta means, the triangle, divided by the change in time. The periodic table this being developed 150 years ago. The 
main person behind it was a, a, a Russian called Dmitry Mendeleev. In the periodic table, there are over 100 elements now given. The groups, they are columns, they are where the elements all have the same number of outer electrons. They have the similar properties as well. The periods, the rows, give the number of shells that those electrons are going to be in. The metallic elements are all to the left hand side of the periodic table and the centre. The non metallic elements are to the right hand side of the periodic table. There are seven diatomic elements hydrogen. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. There are two liquids in the periodic table bromine and mercury. The main groups that you need to know are the alkali metals, the halogens, the noble gases and, in the centre, the transition metals. As I said earlier, the group number indicates the number of outer electrons present in that group. Group 1 has 1, group 6 has 6. This gives rise to the valency. The valency is the number of bonds that an atom can make. Metals can make one if it's in group one, two if it's in group two, three if it's in group three. Non metals can make three if it's in group five, two if it's in group six, one if it's in group seven. Group eight, the noble gases, are monatomic, i.e., single element, and do not make any bonds. The bonding is there to give it a full outer shell where possible. Atomic structure. An atom has three basic particles. These are the proton. Proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit, AMU, and has a charge of plus one. The neutron this also has a mass of one atomic mass unit, but has no charge. Both of these are found in the atom centre, the nucleus. The electron, which is the third particle that makes up an atom, has a negligible mass and has a charge of minus one. Electrons fill up shells orbits from the inside, two in the first shell, eight in subsequent shells. The number of electrons will also equal the number of protons in an uncharged atom, thus making sure that the atom is neutral. One way of showing most of the information we just talked about is what's called nuclide notation. In this you get a symbol for the element, not always obvious as sometimes the elements were originally named in Latin. You get given the atomic number. The atomic number is always the number of protons that's present. And if the atom has no charge, that's also the number of electrons. You get given the atomic mass. The atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So to find the number of neutrons present, take away the atomic number from the atomic mass and that will give you the number of neutrons. In the case given 
9 minus 4 would equal 5 neutrons. The electron arrangement you can find in the data book and it gives you the positions of the electrons that are given. 2 in the first shell, on maximum, 8 in the second, third, fourth. And in the top right hand corner you may have a charge given. This indicates whether an, an atom has lost an electron, metals lose electrons, so it would be a positive charge, more protons than neutrons, than electrons, sorry, or a negative charge, non metals gain electrons, so therefore there would be more electrons than protons.